Hey guys, it's Richard of Fish and Nautil channel and Reefs.com. I'm here with my buddy Reynaldo at Pirates Reef. He's one of the SPS gurus in this industry. I am here because I want to show you guys and tell you guys how to color up your SPS. So Reynaldo, tell me your secret. How do you keep such a vibrant SPS corals? It's a lot of work and a lot of looking over the tank every day, you know, right, checking right. every little thing one by one, right. weekly water changes, water weekly change. tests, so but every tank is different. You got to be consistent and stable, but every single tank is different because I know a lot of people that try to mimic other people and do, you know, mm -hmm. what they feed, their lighting schedules, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work out. For me, I, I like running mostly blue, mostly you know, blue. 12 hours, mm -hmm. uh, five hours white with some ramps. Yeah. My feed, I feed a lot the corals. What do you, you know? feed? Feed them oyster feeds, Fido, um, fuel. Okay. I'm even using Acro Power. Okay. I like Acro Power. Sometimes I'll switch it out. And I'll try like another random amino. Right, right. But usually I come back to Acro Power. It's pretty good. It takes it takes a little while. Mm -hmm. Like if you're using one, if you're not using anything, that's why people usually see a, a great reaction. They're like, oh my corals colored up in a week. Mm -hmm. That's because they weren't feeding their corals and they were already starving. Okay. But when you're already feeding a lot of aminos and everything, mm -hmm. then the, the differences are very subtle. You won't you won't notice it. Gotcha. But over time, like a month or so, yeah. or a few weeks, usually I go off nitrate and phosphate if it changes. Mm -hmm. Like if phosphates happen to go up because I changed some chemical, yeah. I'll stop using it. Or if you see the corals lose color or gain color, yeah. then I'll you know I'll know if that amino is working or not. Gotcha. And that's how. You go, you go about it. It's trial and error, really. I've been trying to keep the nitrates above 10. 10. Okay. I always try to keep them above 10, like worldwide says 30. So I try to keep them, you know, close, a little higher. Right, right. Phosphates, I like them close, as close to zero as I can. Gotcha. As long as it's reading on the test, then I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. As long as it's above zero. If it goes to zero, then you run into issues if it's at yeah. zero for too long. Well, it's basically that and then the lighting schedules, but like I said, every tank is different because yeah. the lighting schedules I've tried, you know, I've gotten everybody's radion schedules around right. the hobby. I ask everybody, Sanjay, you know, worldwide, everybody, yeah. and every single person has a different schedule. Correct. Which is amazing to me because everybody has success, yeah. but we all have completely different schedules. Like I've seen people run, most people run 12 hours. Yeah. I saw one this weekend that was only nine hours. Yeah. And their corals looked amazing. Yeah. And it was the same thing, radions, you know. I spoke to both Sanjay and, and Mike about their schedule and they, they have a modified version of the AB Plus on their radions. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like they pretty much do the same thing, but um, Mike is running a little bit more blue. Yeah. And then Sanjay is running more white. Yeah, because Sanjay prefers metal highlight look. Right, I think yeah. it's more of a personal preference when it comes to that. Well, blues will bring out more color. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it still needs a little bit of white to get certain colors. Like you can run all blue all day mm -hmm. and the majority of the corals will look nice. Yeah. But I think you need a little white for growth and there's certain colors on certain SPS and certain corals that I think require a white. Or a certain, certain type of spectrum. Yeah, yeah, a certain spectrum. You gotta take, you just gotta take your time and do everything. It's like a scientific method approach. Like if you're trying, you know, you're doing new aminos, mm -hmm. that's the only thing you can change for whatever amount of time you're trying to check them. You know, like leave it for two weeks or a month mm -hmm. and you have to wait and then you see what happens. And then if you like that, you leave it and you change something else. Mm -hmm. But the problem with most people is they, you know, they're like, oh, my phosphates are a point one. I threw GFO in. Oh, but now I started feeding, you know, this other food as well. So they don't know if the other food is causing the problem or the phosphates or this and that. Right. And you drive yourself crazy and then that's what leads to a crash and you start losing pieces. It's happened to me all the time. Yeah. And I lose pieces here and there because I experiment too much. Really? Because it doesn't really look like it from when you look from No, here. no, no, yeah. Things, you know? This tank is packed, but yeah. still I, I lose things here and there. Everybody does. Right. It's, it happens. I've experimented with um, potassium. Mm -hmm. I've experimented with um, 
iodine. Mm -hmm. And if you go too high on both of those, you will lose things. Right. But every time I play with trace elements too much, that's when I kill stuff. So that's why I'm afraid to mess with them. Right. Because the potassium and the iodine, they will kill right. stuff if you go too high. Right. I heard that, uh, you know, like with potassium and stuff, that it brings the brighter reds. Yeah. And such. Pinks uh, and reds. Pinks and reds. Um, what were your experiments on that so far? Well, I was experimenting. The reason I messed up a few things is I was trying to get that hot pink on the home wrecker. Okay. So I started playing with potassium, but yeah. then I was talking to Mike, you know, Paletta, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me that the potassium test kit is actually a little off. Um, okay. It's not, it's not super precise. So I think, I don't remember if he told me 30% or 40% off. There's a variation, like a deviance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but no one knows that. It's just, it's a little off. So I was reading like 410, which is already high. You're supposed to be like 400. Right. So I was doing like 410, 420. I was trying to keep it really high. And I started losing like, a whole colony just starts melting, another colony starts melting, and I'm like, oh crap, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So I stopped, I stopped the potassium and I did ICP test, mm -hmm. and it was like 480 or something, it was way up there. Oh, gotcha. So that happened to me with that, and then iodine, I did the same thing as well. I was messing with iodine, and I brought it up to like 0.18, which is supposed to be 0.06, yeah, yeah. and I lost a colony as well on that. Colony is always the first one to go, yeah. because they're, they're bigger and they're adapted to their stability in your tank. Gotcha. So frags have a better chance of surviving versus a colony. Really? Yeah. That's wow. why when you ship large encrusted chunks, they die and the little fresher ones survive. Really? That's the first time I've heard that. that, that but you know, you learn new things every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's SPS, awesome. your colonies will die before the frags will most of the time. I keep alkalinity 8.4. 8.4? Um, I don't check calcium. I check magnesium randomly just here and there, but I really don't need to because I use the two part equal parts, uh, Julian C balance. Okay. So I just do it equal parts and it keeps calcium right in line with the, with the alkalinity. Right. Um, the only other things I test is nitrate and phosphate every week. I keep that, like I said, I try to keep the nitrate above 10, phosphate's close to zero. Gotcha. And other than that, it's just really feeling out your tank. Like you have to know your tank. Like yes. you, when you look at it, you'll see a certain coral is polyps closed or you know it's always happy and you'll know something is wrong it's just yeah. really feeling out your, your system gotcha that's all it really is and I, I've spent a lot of time looking at a tank so gotcha so I know where everything is supposed to be if anything's out of place you know right 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 you, 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 you develop an eye for it yeah 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 <laughs> alright guys so once again this is Richard from Aficionado channel and reefs.com I was with my friend Reynaldo of Pirates Reef and teaching you guys how to keep your SPS in most vibrant form possible have a great day guys Thank you.